Hello, I'm Benson and welcome to my channel. Today is going to be a bit of a mixed bush of everything that I experienced with the Bamboo Lab P2S. As usual, my channel is not about selling stuff. I never really push things to sell. Basically, this is just a platform for me to showcase my own experience in terms of how I spend my money. And I hope you guys can find the information useful and spend your money wisely as well. There will be a lot of um, tips and tricks about 3D printing, but I'm no expert. I'm a quite an idiot in terms of designing 3D products. So most of the time I just click a button and print. But to be fair, I think that's most of the general population in 2025 who's into 3D printing. In the old days, it's very expert stuff. You have to build your own machine. You have to understand every parameters of settings. But nowadays you just click a button and print. But obviously this is my own opinion. So I have pushed about three or four videos out so far on my channel. And it's quite rare for me to have so many videos um, weekly on one specific topic because my channel is very random. One of the most commonly asked questions about um, the channel is have you tested the hot ends in terms of the fast flow? For me, I always try to showcase what my experience is and to be honest with you, I have not a good experience with the Bamboo Lab um, hot, hot end. I lost two days of my life that I never got back when I opened my machine and this um, nozzle gave me so much problem. And I try to uh, troubleshoot and understand why we have that abnormal filament resistant error. At the end, I think this um, they were just clocked. If I have other nozzles to test, then it will be ideal. But at that time, I only have the 0 0.4 and 0 0.2 where I bought it um, at the same time. And then when I used the 0 0.2, it didn't give me the, the problem. So I understand that is this particular nozzle. And then I bought an aftermarket a hot end because it's quicker. Um, for it to come. I bought a cheap um, AliExpress hot end and it printed fantastic. Because I'm printing a lot of carbon fiber filaments, so I want to have a nozzle which is a uh, hard wearing and stuff like that. So I will show you guys what I printed later on today. But I guess most of you want to know what's the difference between the two hot ends. Is there an actual difference? Because a lot of the time um, in, the, in the Chinese light market, um, they will just slap whatever they want on the adverts and claims that they can do whatever they they claim they can do. I have two hot ends here. So I got the Bamboo Lab one, which has a barcode on top. Let me see if I can focus that properly. And then I have the AliExpress one, which is like a, a six pound um, job of a high flow. I chop off the tip from the Bamboo Lab hot end, so you guys can see. So basically the Bamboo Lab um, standard flow hot end is just a straight through. So you can see a hole here. Where is the... Um, high flow from AliExpress and you can see there is distinctive three holes inside. Not complete circular hole, but there is an extra piece of metal which conducts heat better. And that's why they melt it faster, I guess, so you can push the filament out quicker, just in case you can't see it on the screen. So I got two hot ends here, and this is the needle that come with the Bamboo Lab uh, machine for you to clear the clock. So this is the high flow, and if you drop the pin in there, there's a thicker end and a thinner end. So if you drop the thicker end in there now, it won't go through because it's stopped by that piece of metal, um, the extra piece of metal for conducting heat. Whereas the bamboo lab, if you drop the pin in there, it will go through because it's just a straight tube. If that is the technology, why are they charging 44 pounds for the bamboo lab? and six pound for the high flow. And I paid six pound for this a couple of weeks ago and that was still kind of a new thing. And um, now I think you can get it even cheaper. I will put the link in the description so you guys can have a look yourself. But I don't understand. Yes, you can do lab testing and stuff like that. So Bamboo Lab claims that this can um, print up to 40% uh, faster. And um, I've been using like ludicrous mode on the high flow. So 100 um, 66% or something like that, ridiculous. But saying that, you do need a bit of skill in terms of uh, making your print more efficient or faster, even though if you pay for the 44 pound or the six pound one, because even if you click the high flow um, setting in the Bamboo uh, Maker software, it doesn't necessarily speed up the print. All it depends is your um, filament profile. I will let another YouTuber or video explain to you, but basically you do need to change some settings if you want the most efficient print. It's something to do with the maximum flow rate. You can do a print to test out what's the maximum flow rate as a result of changing to a high flow um, hot end. And then you can use that figure and put them into the machine as a um, 
filament profile. So every time the machine prints, it prints at that particular speed. If you don't change the maximum flow rate, um, even if you put this in, you're not going to get the most benefit out of printing. Yeah, but share with your friends and family to win arguments and stuff like that. But yeah, it's, I, I don't see much difference between the two. Blatant copy or not, I don't care. As long as it works, that works. The, the other thing is like uh, most of the ads um, I saw on the um, AliExpress um, is not really for the P2S. It's more for the H2D version. There is no difference. The hot end will fit your um, P2S. The only difference is the silicon sock. So the one come with the AliExpress, it doesn't fit my P2S, but that's fine. I just put the um, original sock over it and um, it, it will work. There's a big saving. And um, to be honest with you, for the price, you just buy loads of this um, cheaper one. And the other good things about the AliExpress hot hand is that it comes with a removable tip. The reason why you can see the metal bits that I show you just now is because the tip come off. It comes with two little wrench, and that is to change the tip. So when the tip worn out or stuck, you can actually change it. They do say change it when this is like a hot, so you get a better seal and all that. And um, depends on which vendor you use on AliExpress, some of them even come with the spare tips like this. And that's another reason why I go with the aftermarket tip instead of the Bamboo Lab one. If money is not an option, you want to go with Bamboo Lab, fine. This is just an option for anyone who is interested in hot ends. The other thing is the um, Cryo grip. Someone asked me to test it, so I got it from AliExpress. How much was this? So, so this one I paid £18.38. Now I find that this is not so much saving on its own because I think you can get a bamboo lap uh, cool plate for um, not much different. But in terms of results, yes, it does work. So I printed this um, test um, from uh, Maker's World. And it printed it like this, yeah. So literally a tiny contact point on the on the plate, and it comes out. Now, a lot of people say, yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing special about it. But what is special about this is that I only use 35 degrees um, on the plate itself. So it say here PLA from 30 to 50. Uh, from 30, I find I don't really get good results. You can use it at 30 if you are printing something big, but with the stress test, um, it failed at 30. And um, yeah, 35, it actually printed perfect. And this is with a 0.4 nozzle. Again, the nozzle make a big difference because when I use the 0.2 nozzle, um, the same setting, it failed. It becomes spaghetti at the end of the print and the AI detection doesn't even detect it. So it just keep printing a bit of a mess. And I tried it again. So 0.2 nozzle doesn't really go with a, a cool, cool plate or too low temperature. The barcode, or the QR code doesn't work with your uh, P2S machine. So either you disable the identification or else you always have to ignore error to get it print again. I don't know what's the other way around it, but yeah, I actually use it at 40 degrees, which is a bit cooler than the normal PLA stuff. So yeah, is it worth uh, getting? I think so. And um, yeah, it comes off the plate very easily when it's cooled and uh, yeah, it does work. So this kind of a monitoring uh, thing for humidity is so important. This is the type that I'm getting from AliExpress and they are fantastic and because they are solar powered. So effectively you never run out of battery. There is a battery backup at the moment. It does come with one inside. You can buy the version that without it as well. Uh, slightly cheaper, but what that means is I never need to change the battery on it. There is so many times that I got those uh, black round ones and they stop working. I have to get those tiny lithium batteries to change them. This kind of um, vacuum bag is fantastic for keeping your filament dry. At the moment, as you can see, they are on yeah, they are on like 10% humidity. And this is another rant that I have. It's not to do with the brand because I have the same with Bamboo Lab. So you would expect to open a bag of filament and put it in a machine and it will print perfect. But a lot of the time is not the case. So um, the moisture content from the original bag, doesn't matter if it is Bamboo, Gyro or any uh, other vendor, um, just be prepared. If you want to print fantastic print, you have to dry your filament first before you actually put it in the AMS. Now the P2S does have the options to heat up and to dry the filament, but I don't really use that. I don't know why. I just don't like the idea of drying uh, filament in the AMS. Especially I have like four in a row. So what I did was I printed a lot of those uh, holder, which holds a, which holds a lot of uh, silicon gel. 
and this will keep your filament dry even if you put a fresh one in leave it there for uh, more than overnight and then um, let it soak up some of the moisture it's not going to be like you know um, dripping wet and stuff like that with your new roll of filament but i do find that a lot of failure is because the filament is new i, I think um a lot of time the setting is correct even if you print the same print if it is a new roll of filament a lot of the time it might give you some problem um now i also want to show you something expensive now you don't have to have this but it is so nice to have a device like this so this is by a company called hozo and it's the neo blade they are quite expensive i think this one is about 200 pounds or something like that, 150 basically this is a ultrasonic knife um, it's battery operated uh, and when you turn it on it vibrates the knife in the front so for example let me um, show you um, in close up first so this is the device it's like a pen with a knife in the front now the front part of the knife is interchangeable it does come with a set of uh, five or six different shape but you do have to replace them when they go blunt but if you have to be very careful with this this one should last a long time and this particular model you got a lock button in the front so you can have it on all the time or you can only turn on the motor when you press the top now this one have active cooling so it should kind of uh, last longer a lot of these kind of pen they don't let you use it for a long time now the reason why i got this pen is because a lot of the time you want to shape your uh, 3d print stuff and you can use your normal knife let me show you so this is my go-to uh, blade let's say i want to um, cut this 3d model this is a failed dragon so let's say i want to cut this bit off and you try to cut it it doesn't doesn't want to go through so you have to use a lot of force i can't even cut the corner off but and this is just a normal pla but how about something with carbon fiber this is even harder just to make a dent but with this this is going to slice it through Ooh. and this is going to cut it like butter so let's say i turn it on and then i want to cut that corner off you just touch it and let it glide and that's easy it is going to be hot so you have to be careful not to touch the blade now again now this is the pegt carbon fiber just now i use a sharp blade to cut a dent on the side here i'm going to cut the other corner off is it going to be a big trunk and you can see i'm not forcing the knife through I'm just letting the weight of the blade do the work. Do a bit of a close up. So here I got a piece of uh, PLA that I need to cut. So I want to cut that corner off. Here's my blade, activate the blade and then let it glide through. Literally it melts as it touched the PLA. Carbon fiber, PEGT carbon fiber. I want to cut that off, touch it, let the knife do the work. Oh the part fly off oh, let, let's do that again blade turn on corner touch there we go clean cut every time very expensive but well i'll say very expensive is much cheaper now a couple of years ago this thing will have cost like three four hundred pounds and it's tilted so with a cable now you can have it cordless and it doesn't just work on pla and plastic it works on paper as well so cardboard boxes and stuff like that so uh, Christmas is coming. Have you been a good boy or girl? Maybe you'll get one in your sock. Anyway, so that's the Hozo Neo Blade. Fantastic purchase. Filament is very important. Obviously, it makes it break your print a lot of the time. And I have no um, brand loyalty to filament. At the moment, my favorite brand is Jayo. And this is the PETG carbon fiber, same as the one that I printed this part that I demonstrated just now. Then my go-to filaments for something that I need to print really, really tough and really, really hard. Not the easiest material to work with, but if you get it right, it's fantastic. So this thing will not break. And um, I did put the link in the description in my previous video and uh, for some reason they sold out and they're never to be found again so this is my last reel hopefully they hopefully they will bring some out again on the market but at the same time um, i haven't seen them after my last video that i posted obviously bamboo lab filaments they are really good they have they work they are quite consistent um, a bit pricey unless they are on offer 
For my filaments, I usually pay about six to 10 pounds a kilo. That is if you buy in bulk. But now Amazon actually sell some of them cheaply as well um, in um, Amazon Hull. Um, Sometimes you can buy single row, um, you mix and match, and you still pay less than £10 a row, which is fantastic. So a lot of people say, okay, so what have you been printing, Benson, with a um, £800 machine? The reason why I say this is going to be my last video on the Bamboo Lab machine is because this is going to go to my sister, who runs a miniature um, model business. So this is a piece that I printed with the P2S. This is her file, so she designed it. And I used a 0.2 nozzle, a bamboo lab nozzle, and printed it at 0 0.08 um, layer height. So this is the best quality that you can get for a P2S in terms of resolution. If I show you, now the only part I don't like is the cushion, because it has a gentle curve. And no matter how you do it, because this is already the minimum uh, layer height, you can see that there are lines on top. But apart from that, this is really delicate. Look at how thin the chair leg is. Apparently, if you do this in resin, um, it becomes too fragile even to handle. But um, yeah, it is now working. And the reason why I say drying a filament is very important is because um, when I first um, print, especially this one, so these are wood type of filament, and um, this becomes so brittle that even holding it, it will break. And you can see all, all four legs broken. And this is because when I first got it, open it, the first print, um, I think the moisture content in there kind of kills the print. Now it's harder, I think it's kind of stabilized. But anyway, who likes to talk about failure, right? Other things I printed is like a, a massive knife like this. And I will put in, I will put the link in the description where I downloaded it from. I didn't design this, so this is from Maker's World. I can't even show you guys in this angle because this is huge. So this is huge because this is actually taller than what my uh, ceiling height here. I can't even let it stand up straight. So I might have to change the angle to show you guys. But yeah, so this is printed. So it look a bit glossy because I put like uh, UV resin um, on the front just for testing. But I don't like the plasticky look. So I might have to put some um, matte um, varnish on it. But I do like the rest of the print. So, you know, these are fantastic. And because I printed in the PEGT carbon fiber, this is really, really tough as well. So um, yeah, it's not designed to be like fully functional chopping melon and stuff like that. But if you imagine the weight of it and shaking around, it is holding up really, really nicely. And this is all designed by the same person and I downloaded it on Maker World. I'm sure I will give them credit. So this is another sword. There is no metal rebar or anything like that. This is just a um, PEGT carbon fiber printed every single part of it. So this thing is printed in different parts on my P2S. Um, the tail part, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So come in like eight sections, I think come in like two or three files. And um, each of the eight segments, I would say around six to eight hours, depends if you're using high flow, low flow. But all this is printed with the 0.4 nozzle. I could have used the 0.6, but I thought I'm going to lose too much details. But I do love the dragon scale and the dragon face, and um, it comes out really, really nice. So we all bought our 3D printer for our different purposes. For me, I like making props and actually um, just learning about the new technology. So this is the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. No matter what's the reason you got the P2S for, I hope you're happy with your purchase. And uh, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to my channel to help me grow. Can't wait to see you next time with more interesting gadget. Bye bye. A family so tight, a loving wife who's his beacon of light in a world so fierce. He's carving his place with passion and heart.